एवरी वन टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अनादर लेक्चर सीरीज सो इन दिस सीरीज वील डिस्कस सम कॉन्सेप्ट ब्रीफली एंड ट्राई टू सॉल्व सम प्रीवियस इयर क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम डिफरेंट एग्जाम्स सो इन ईच वीडियो वील ट्राई टू कवर वन चैप्टर एंड करेस्पॉन्डिंग प्रीवियस इयर क्वेश्चन सो दैट इट विल बी हेल्पफुल फॉर एवरी बॉडी सो इन दिस वीडियो वील हैव कंसिडर्ड सो थर्मोडाइनिक्स आज आवर सब्जेक्ट एंड विल डिस्कस द फर्स्ट चैप्टर हियर सो इफ यू हैव नॉट सब्सक्राइब्ड आवर चैनल डू सब्सक्राइब इट एंड प्रेस ऑन द बेल आइकॉन सो दैट यू विल नेवर मिस एनी अपडेट्स और एनी नोटिफिकेशन फ्रॉम आवर चैनल सो वेन एवर एनी वीडियो विल बी अपलोडेड बाई आवर चैनल सो यू विल बी गेटिंग नोटिफिकेशन फॉर इट so without wasting time let us move forward and start our discussion for the first chapter so do watch till last so that you can take maximum benefit from this so let us start it in this first chapter we will discuss introduction to thermodynamics and some basic concepts related to thermodynamics so thermodynamics can be defined as the science of energy and we know the energy is what it is the ability of doing work generally we know that okay so how can we say that it is the science of energy because in whole thermodynamics subject we are going to deal with work and heat and we know work and heat are the form of energy so we can say that thermodynamics is a science of energy thermodynamics this word came from Uh, two greek word that is therm and uh, uh, dynamics so therm means heat and dynamics means power so which is the most descriptive of the earlier forces to convert it into power it's including power generation we are doing some extra things and uh, modern things like uh, we are using thermodynamics in the refrigeration system and uh, for relationship along the properties of matter all of us know about the conservation law of energy which is one of the most fundamental law of nature so it simply states that during an energy interaction it cannot be changed from one point to another but the total amount remains constant that will be energy is conserved we can say energy neither be created nor be destroyed so let us take an example over here a rock is falling from a certain height so when it was at maximum height then it was having maximum potential energy so here we have written that potential energy was 10 unit and it was maximum when it will be falling down then we can say potential energy will decrease because height will decrease so that here kinetic energy will increase because when it will be falling down its velocity will increase so if we check over here then kinetic energy which was zero in the previous case now it is 3 units so but if we will be uh, calculate the total energy in both the cases then we can get it is 10 which is constant one then from this we can say energy cannot be created or destroyed it can only change its forms because here we saw the kinetic energy that is sum of potential energy get converted into kinetic energy so if we will take example of our metabolism case then suppose we are taking 5 units of energy and uh, we are uh, exiting that is 4 <coughs> units of energy by some workout then we can say Uh, one unit will be stored in our body so we can uh, gain our weight okay so that uh, we can say again energy is conserved so change in the energy content of a body or any other system is equal to the difference between energy input and energy output we can say change in energy will be equal to energy in minus energy out so past law of thermodynamics is simply an expression for the conservation of energy principle and it asserts that energy is a thermodynamic property so according to first law of thermodynamics that energy is defined as a thermodynamic property so 
in first law of thermodynamics we can get only information about the quantity of energy but in case of your second law we will be getting quantity as well as quality of that energy all actual processes occur in the direction of decreasing quality of energy so for that reason take uh, let us take an example over here so if we are keeping uh, a cup of hot coffee in our normal ambient then we can see the heat from the higher temperature that is hot coffee will move to the cool environment and heat cannot uh, flow uh, from the cool environment to the hot environment so it can never be possible so we can say actual processes occur in the decreasing quality of energy so it is well known that substance consists of a large number of particles called molecules okay so any substance we can say it must be consist of number of molecules and the properties of the substances uh, the shows the behavior of the particles the macroscopic approach to the study of thermodynamics that doesn't require knowledge of the behavior of individual particles is called classical thermodynamics a more elaborate approach based on the average behavior of large group of individual particles is called statistical thermodynamics and it is microscopic approach of study so in case of your macroscopic approach it is not necessary to study the behavior of each particle but in case of your microscopic approach we need to study the particles behaviors okay so we need to study the behavior of each particle and by taking the average we can sum up and that is known as your statistical uh, statistical thermodynamics and if we are not considering the behavior of all those particles then it can be called as your classical thermodynamics then next part that is application areas of thermodynamics so thermodynamics application it is having a vast application we can say so if we will be seeing the uh, what that application so in our body also we can get our application so you can read whatever written here so if i will see i will say that our heart is beating constantly so that uh, we can say our pumping that is blood pumping is taking place constantly and continuously we can say and due to that uh, heat is being uh, developed inside our body okay and that heat is being rejected continuously uh, to environment so we can say in our body also in our metabolism process also thermodynamics has a application has an application and like this uh, some more examples if i want to include here like uh, whatever i have written that is uh, electric okay so electric industry okay gas trains heating okay in air conditioning system okay uh, refrigerator humidifier okay so commando pressure cooker so uh, that is not a commando okay so that is uh, wrongly written here so that is pressure cooker and the water heater okay iron even computers tv Okay, and static for car any engine in case of your any engine we can say thermodynamics has a vast application okay so in like rockets aeroplanes like this okay so thermodynamics has a vast application in this areas okay so uh, you should read okay so wherever we see then we can get uh, our application of thermodynamics then next that is system and control volume system can be defined by a region of consideration for study so if this area we can say it is considered for our study then this region is known as our system then system uh, excluding system whatever outside to the system we will be getting that is known as surrounding okay then system are and uh, surroundings can be separated okay are separated by a layer that layer is known as the boundary 
ओके सो दैट लेयर मे बी फिक्स्ड दैट मे बी मूवेबल दैट मे बी रियल दैट मे बी इमेजिनरी ओके सो दैट मे बी एमंग ऑल फोर सो लेट अस सी इट द सिस्टम इज डिफाइंड एज द क्वांटिटी ऑफ मैटर और रिजर्वेशन इन स्पेस रीजन फॉर स्टडी ओके सो द मास रीजन आउटसाइड टू द सिस्टम इज कॉल्ड एज सराउंडिंग and the real or imaginary surface that separates the system from the surrounding is called boundary the boundary of the system can be fixed or movable the boundary contact surface shared by the both the system as well as surrounding so mathematically if we speak then boundary has zero thickness and the is cannot okay it neither contain any mass or nor occupy any volume in space then system may be of two types that may be closed or open so depending on whether fixed mass or fixed volume so if it is of fixed mass then we can say it is of closed type if it is of if it is of the fixed volume type then we can say it is of the control volume type we can say then we can say this is an open system then okay so let us see it so if it is control volume then we can say this is a open system okay so a closed system that is we can say it is a control mass system consist of a fixed amount of mass okay so no mass can cover its boundary but energy may cross the boundary okay so energy if energy is crossing the boundary and mass is not crossing the boundary then we can say your it is that system is known as a closed system so if we will see here then we can say this is our control mass system mass is constant here and mass is not going out or taking a, not uh, coming in so but energy is going out and coming in so this is known as a closed system over here so if we'll be taking an, another example here then we can say heat is being uh, provided into this system and there is a fixed boundary and there is another moving boundary okay and heat is being supplied from the lower side so that your moving boundary okay so that moves up okay so there is a expansion uh, is taking place so but mass is remaining constant that is 2 kg here we can see so mass is remaining constant in both those cases so 2 kg and 2 kg so we can say this is a control mass system okay so next a special case of closed system we can say if energy is also not allowed to transfer okay so if again there is no energy interaction then we can say this is an isolated system and an open system or a control volume is a properly properly selected region in space it is really and uh, okay so it is a device that involves mass flow compressor okay compressor turbine nozzle these are the example of uh, open system flow through the pipes okay so these are the uh, what open system so here control volume approach we can see so let us see the example it is like an heat exchanger okay so here if we'll see it is total a control volume where uh, we can say it is a water heater and cold water is taking in in this side and hot water is going out okay so here we can say mass transfer is taking place and energy is being supplied also to that cylindrical self water heater so that we can say there is both mass transfer as well as energy transfer so we can say this is a open system so mass transfer is taking place here as well as heat is transferring into the system so we can say this is a open system so from here we can remember open system is based on your control volume approach next example so there is a nozzle so the this is the total bound and some mass is going into the control volume and is going out okay 
so this is the real boundary and mass transfer is taking place in this direction if we will see in the figure number b okay then mass is taking entry in this direction and it's a control volume with fixed and moving boundaries okay and a is the control volume with real and imaginary boundary so this is a fixed boundary and this is the real boundary and this is the imaginary boundary okay and uh, mass is taking entry in this direction and when it is being compressed then it can go out also so here we can see both mass interaction is taking place so properties of system so any characteristics of a system is called as properties so different properties like pressure temperature and volume and mass so properties are considered to be either intensive or extensive so intensive properties are independent of mass so it doesn't depend on mass so some properties like system temperature okay density okay so density there may be a confusion okay there remains a doubt so let us try to clear that one so let me use the pen over here so if i am taking any mass okay so any body okay so which having a mass that is m and volume that is p so if i'll be dividing uh, into two equal parts so uh, each equal part will be carrying mass that will be m by 2 and another part will also carry that is m by 2 and volume will also again divided so that will be you can say one part will be consist b by 2 another part will also consist of b by 2 then if we we'll try to calculate the density of each small part then that okay though that can be calculated by m by b and that mass is given by m by 2 and volume is given by b by 2 so again here it will be equal to m by b which will be equal to the density of the bigger the bigger uh, product or bigger body we can say so here it is not depending on the mass so here we can say the density is an intensive property so extension properties are those whose values depend on the size of the system that means it depend on mass so examples like total mass total volume and momentum okay so extensive properties of unit mass is called as your specific properties okay then next is your state and equilibrium so consider a state system not undergoing any change so if we'll be considering any system which is not changing then that is known as uh, state and we need if we can calculate or measure all these properties there then all those properties show the state Okay, so properties only can define the state of the system. Let us take an example here. So here uh, a state, okay, so here M is given as 2 kg and T1 20 and V1 that is given 1.5 kg and uh, if we expand that again mass remains constant and temperature remains constant and here volume increases so because it is an expansion process so from we can say state 1 we are moving to state 2 where volume is being increased so during this uh, okay so this is known as two states so these two states uh, are being defined by different uh, properties so again equilibrium state thermodynamics deal with your equilibrium state so system is in thermal equilibrium if the temperature is same throughout the internal system that is entire system so if there is no temperature differential which is the driving force for heat flow so heat will only flow when there is temperature difference so if there is no temperature difference then there we can say there will be no heat flow so we can say this is in thermal equilibrium and for mechanical equilibrium we can say it is the main cause of the pressure okay so if there is no unbalanced forces then we can say it is in mechanical equilibrium so read whatever written here so it is the reason due to pressure okay so and uh, if we will say about the chemical equilibrium if there is no chemical reaction then we can say chemical equilibrium inside the system then your system to be 
totally in equilibrium that is thermodynamic equilibrium so we can say all these three equilibrium should be satisfied that is thermal equilibrium and mechanical equilibrium and chemical equilibrium then only we can say it is the system is in thermodynamically equilibrium state postulates so already we have discussed that any state can be defined by the properties so experimentally it was found that it is not necessary to define all those properties so it can be defined by a less number of properties also so the state of a simple compressible system is completely specified by two independent intensity property so if we can uh, define two minimum two uh, intensity properties then we can define any state so that is the state postulate this is the most important here so if we we'll see an example here the nitrogen uh, the state of the nitrogen can be defined by two uh, external uh, that is intensity property temperature and uh, that is volume is given okay specific volume again that is the intensity property the state of the nitrogen is fixed by two independent intensity properties so this is we can say a state of the nitrogen the next is of process and uh, cycles so any change that a system undergoes from one equilibrium state to another uh, equilibrium state is called as a process and the series of states through which uh, system passes during a process is called the path of the process and to describe a process completely one should specify the initial and, and the final state of the process and as well as the path it follows so to complete a process there should be a uh, that is an initial state as well as uh, a final state and there should be a single path okay so to go from a single state to another state there may be a number of path like this so for uh, so to complete a process so there should be a single path okay and this is known as the process path okay so this graph may be plotted between different properties so here we have taken property a and property b so this property may be pressure volume temperature entropy like this so we have not discussed about entropy okay so all uh, this much uh, all only know that is pressure volume and uh, okay enthalpy entropy we have not discussed okay so we'll discuss later and what is a quasi static process when a process proceeds in such a manner that the system remains infinitesimally close to an equilibrium state at all times it is called as quasi static or quasi equilibrium process so let us take the example that is slow compression or quasi static process so if the piston is somewhat here and uh, if will be compressing it then uh, we can assume that uh, the temperature at the initial state that will be equal to or that will be nearly equal to the um, next state okay so which uh, as uh, at a distance that is small distance but in case of your fast compression so the distance is more so that we can't say that uh, these two temperatures will be equal or uh, two temperatures are uh, nearly equal but in case of your slow compression we can say the properties of uh, these states may be equal or nearly equal so we can say this is a slow compression and this will be as a quasi static process so a quasi static process will be consisting of number of equilibrium points okay so uh, at each equilibrium point we can say the properties are equal so quasi static that process or quasi equilibrium process is an, an idealized process so it is not the real one and it is not a true representation of an actual process so actual processes are not quasi static actually quasi equilibrium process actually doesn't exist but uh, engineers are interested in quasi equilibrium process so there are two reasons and first one is the it is easy to analyze and the second one for the comparing comparing reason actually so because you can say uh, in case of your quasi static process the work producing work production will be maximum so in the actual process 
whatever work will be getting that will be compared with the what quasi static process and we can say in actual process whatever work will be getting that will be less than that of the quasi static process then let us take an example of a process here so uh, it is gra the graph is plotted between pressure and volume and uh, let this is a quasi static process so quasi static process means it is a very slow process that means it will be consisting of number of equilibrium points so one point is the initial state and two point is the final state so b1 is the initial volume and b2 is the final volume a non quasi static process represented by a dashed line instead of a solid line so you can remember this one so another thing that uh, iso is often used to designate a process for which a particular uh, property remains constant so if i am telling that uh, this is isothermal process then this is uh, temperature remains constant during that process likewise if i am telling isobaric process then pressure remains constant during that process and if i am telling isochoric or isometric process then you can say volume remains constant during that process a system is said to have undergone a cycle if it returns to its initial state at the end of the process so if we want to uh, say that uh, any cycle so cycle means the initial and final states are identical next is the steady flow process so steady implies there will be uh, no change with respect to time okay so we can compare with uh, your uh, popular examples like uh, steady girlfriends and steady boyfriends so if your girlfriend is not changing with respect to time then we can say it is your steady girlfriend so opposite of steady we can say this is unsteady or transient again we can compare so your if your girlfriend is changing with respect to time then we can say this is your transient condition transient girlfriend so the term uniform implies no change with the location over a specified region okay so for a particular region we can say uh, at a particular region there will be uniform flow okay so there is a uniform properties the steady flow process uh, uh, we can define by uh, in that flow where your flow properties doesn't vary with respect to time okay so flow through a control volume steadily okay so that is fluid properties can change from point to point okay but uh, it will not uh, vary with respect to time okay so if we'll be taking this example over here then if we are measuring at 1 pm at different points then we can get different temperatures again if we'll be measuring at 3 pm at those same points then we'll be getting if we'll be getting same results then we can say this is a steady flow here we can see uh, at each points we are getting different temperatures but uh, it doesn't vary with respect to time next temperature and zeroth law of thermodynamics so already we have familiar with temperature so we, we can define temperature by the degree of hotness and coldness so by sensation our sensation we can feel that uh, our uh, tea is hot or water is cold like this but we cannot assign actually a particular value how much hot is it and sometimes our sensation may fail because at the same temperature your metal chair and plastic chair gave different results different temperatures we can feel so here if we'll be taking an example where iron is at uh, 150 degrees celsius temperature and copper is at 20 degrees celsius temperature and if you were uh, uh, bringing them into contact with each other then after some time we can get uh, that uh, there will be equilibrium state we can get where uh, they are getting at 60 degree both of, uh, both of them are getting at 60 degree so here we can say two bodies reaching thermal equilibrium after being brought into contact with each other so next is your zeroth law of thermodynamics so uh, it is telling that if two bodies are in thermal equilibrium with a third body then they are also in thermal equilibrium with each other 
so it may be silly but uh, it is the basic law of thermodynamics so uh, uh, by using this laws uh, uh, that uh, a number of uh, measuring instruments are prepared so if i can say this is one body and this is another body and this is another body and if we will say first body is thermally equilibrium with this body okay so this uh, and it is at a temperature t and again it is at temperature t and uh, again this is at a temperature t then we can say these two bodies are also thermally equilibrium with each other according to zeroth law of thermodynamics next this is the formula for conversion of uh, different units of temperature that is the degree centigrade by 5 that will be equal to fahrenheit minus 32 divided by 9 so and that will be equal to t minus 273.15 divided by 5 so if we will be comparing the first one with the third one okay so degree centigrade by 5, 5 that will be equal to uh, t minus 273.5 divided by 5 so i can write degree centigrade uh, will be equal to what t minus 273.15 and uh, t that is in terms of k that is kelvin so that can be calculated by equal to degree centigrade plus 273.15 that will be nearly equal to 273 likewise you can convert from degree centigrade to degree fahrenheit let us discuss uh, some previous question previous year questions over here so first question that is zeroth law of thermodynamics defines what so already we have discussed uh, now okay so zeroth law of thermodynamics is telling about the temperature so c option will be the correct answer over here moving towards next question the term ntp stands for what that is the normal temperature pressure so we can say normal temperature pressure is the option c c will be the correct answer again here moving towards next question which of the following is an extensive property so let us check option a temperature is an intensive property density is also an intensive property pressure is again an uh, intensive property but enthalpy we can say this is uh, an extensive property so this question was asked in uh, 2014 ssc j so here we can say d option will be the correct answer moving towards next the thermodynamic system refers to what so uh, we have discussed that any definite uh, region in space which is uh, uh, taken for a study so that is a option will be the correct answer over here then uh, moving towards next question a closed system okay closed thermodynamic system manifest when okay so matter is not uh, allowed to cross the boundary and but uh, energy transferred uh, uh, does uh, occur across the okay across the system boundary so what is our closed system so closed system when the mass doesn't transfer but energy may transfer so a option will be the correct answer over here then moving towards next question choose the open thermodynamic system okay so open thermodynamic system where control volume approach will be there then we can say that is a con uh, that is open thermodynamic system so manual ice cream freezer so that is not the open one but uh, centrifugal pump that uh, can be the answer over here so because uh, this is uh, okay and uh, control volume approach uh, is present in the centrifugal pump so like centrifugal pump and uh, uh, nozzle uh, turbine in in these devices we can say open system uh, okay so let us move forward towards uh, automobile storage battery so that can be the answer pressure cooker is also not the answer so b option will be the correct answer over here moving towards next question question number seven a control volume is what control volume is uh, so uh, previously we discussed now okay control volume is a uh, open system so we can say it is not an isolated system closed system but heat and uh, work across the boundary no it can be the answer and uh, a specific uh, specific amount of mass in space that can be the answer also so a fixed region in space where mass heat and work can cross the boundary so this is the open system so this can be the answer so d option will be the correct answer over here moving towards next question 
दैट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ अन एक्सटेंसिव प्रॉपर्टी इज एसेंशियली डिपेंडेंट ऑन ओके सो एक्सटेंसिव प्रॉपर्टी मींस दैट इज डिपेंडेंट ऑन मास ऑफ द सिस्टम सो ए ऑप्शन दैट इज टेलिंग दैट मास और एक्सटेंट ऑफ द सिस्टम ओके सो ए ऑप्शन विल बी द करेक्ट आंसर ओवर हियर सो फॉर क्वेश्चन नंबर 8 ए ऑप्शन इज द करेक्ट आंसर मूविंग टुवर्ड्स नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन आइस केप्ड इन ए वॉल इंसुलेटेड थर्मोफ्लक्स इज एन एग्जांपल ऑफ फ्री सिस्टम सो थर्मोफ्लक्स मींस देयर वी कैन से देयर विल बी नो हीट ट्रांसफर एज वेल एज देयर विल बी देयर विल बी नो मास ट्रांसफर सो इट कैन बी द एग्जांपल ऑफ आइसोलेटेड सिस्टम सो इट कैन बी द क्लोज सिस्टम ओपन सिस्टम और नॉन फ्लो एडिबेटिक सिस्टम सो बी ऑप्शन विल बी द करेक्ट आंसर ओवर हियर मूविंग टुवर्ड्स नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन which one of the following is the extensive property of a thermodynamic system so we can say extensive means is it is dependent on mass so if you see volume is dependent on mass so let us check all other options also for specific enthalpy again it is not dependent temperature it is not dependent density it is not dependent so a option will be the correct answer over here with this we have reached the at the end of lecture for today so if you like this video then press on the uh, like button given below and uh, if you have not subscribed our channel uh, till now then do subscribe it and press on the bell icon so that uh, you will be getting uh, notifications from our channel whenever we will be uploading any video so do share it and uh, keep smiling be safe okay so thank you for watching